Okay, we're looking at the graphs of some exponential functions. And we have a picture here where I've constructed graphs of four exponential functions. Uh, I'll note that the green graph has that strange bend that I often get into functions that are concave upward. And that's simply a flaw in the way I drew it. Uh, you can improve on it if you wish. Okay, so we have four graphs here. Now, the white graph, and if you're colorblind, you might see more than one graph is white, but I've indicated it. Uh, this graph right here, the second highest one, is the b equals 2 graph. Now, remember that an exponential function can be represented as y equals f of x equals b to the x. So b to the x is the form of a basic exponential function. The graph also, uh, we also have graphs of a times b to the x. These are just graphs of plain old b to the x, 1 times b to the x. Okay, they could be labeled to represent any number a times b to the x. Remember, these graphs are unlabeled. But I've specified the point 0, 1 and the point 0, negative 1. And we'll see what we use this for in a minute. But the point 0, 1 is a common point for all of these graphs. And that indicates that the number in front of b has to be 1 because b to the 0 is always 1. Now, of course, the x-coordinate here is 0. So if this point wasn't uh, 0, 1, if the y value here wasn't 1, we wouldn't be representing just plain old 1 times b to the x. And if you don't understand that, think about it until you do. Uh, but if you haven't understood it after five minutes, uh, just move on. OK, so uh, you will eventually need to understand that, and you probably do already. OK, so we gra the graphs represent these functions for various values of base b. I've given you only the base b for this one graph. So I'm going to pose several questions, and I'll follow up with hints. Again, use the hints responsibly. Don't just skip to the hints. Um, tell me if you're totally desperate for time and don't have time to do this right, uh, you can still get some benefit by jumping to the hip, <coughs> to the hips. OK. Uh, we estimate the B value for each graph. I want you to estimate the B value for each of these graphs. Of course, we have the B value for this one. Having done that, you should be able to estimate <coughs> the value B for each of the other graphs. And then um, find the doubling displacement for the B equals 2 graph. Okay. Find the what is the doubling of the displacement for the b equals 2 graph? Now you know that the b equals 2 graph is 2 to the x, right? So you should be able to figure out exactly what the doubling displacement is. There's no uh, scale on this graph, so you can't just read the doubling displacement for the b equals 2 graph off of the uh, picture here. You uh, need to figure out from the fact that b equals 2, what's the doubling displacement for 2 to the x. And of course, that means you're going to have to think about what the doubling displacement means. We haven't asked you a question of this nature yet. And of course, there are going to be some hints. Not yet, but shortly. OK, then having figured this out, uh, you can actually scale this graph. And that's a hint. Uh, and you can use that scale to estimate the doubling displacement for the remaining graphs. They don't absolutely have to scale it. Once you know what the doubling displacement is for this, uh, you can graphically see what the doubling displacement is for each of the remaining graphs. And just compare it with um, the, double, the graphical doubling displacement on this graph. OK, so uh, we, we, we can do these things. Then, uh, for each graph, I want you to construct a new graph. Okay, for each of these four graphs, and each graph has a form y equals b to the x, the value of b is different for each graph. But for each of these graphs, you have some value of b, and you don't have to know what that value of b is. You do know it for one of the graphs, but you don't have to use that. 
just based on the graphs as you see them with no scale or no nothing. Um, construct the graph of y equals negative b to the x and state its estimated doubling displacement. That means for this graph you want to construct, the, if this is your graph of b to the x, you want to construct the graph of negative b to the x and state the estimated doubling displacement for that graph. Now you've already estimated doubling displacements for the four graphs. That might or might not be helpful. So you want to do that for each of these four graphs. Okay? Then for each of the eight graphs now present because now you will have constructed four new graphs, I want you to construct a graph through the same y-intercept but having the opposite doubling displacement. That is, if the doubling displacement of the graph you are currently looking at, one of the eight, is in this direction, then the opposite doubling displacement is in this direction. It's just as big, but it goes the opposite way. We've seen how that works, so you might need to review and think a little bit about what that means, but that's the task. Okay, then answer these questions. Uh, what symmetries are now present? Now you're going to have 16 graphs by the time you get here. And there are going to be some symmetries. Can you describe those symmetries? Can you recognize them? Can you identify them? Uh, if you identify them and don't describe them in wonderfully precise mathematical language, uh, that's okay. You know, the better your language, of course, uh, the, the better uh, that is. But any description, no matter how badly stated that really does at least convey the idea of each of the symmetries is going to be quite wonderful. Uh, and, and, and even more wonderful if the language is good, but wonderful if you recognize the symmetries, if you see them. We can work on expressing them. We want to see the symmetries. Then, did you use these symmetries? Because uh, many people will probably spontaneously begin using these symmetries. That will depend a lot on your background and uh, on your, you know, just how you see things and so forth. You might or might not have used them, but did you? Okay. And whether you did or not, uh, or if you didn't use them, uh, how could you have done so? How could you have made maximum use of all the symmetries that exist on that picture?